Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, live from beautiful Cape Cod, Massachusetts, here in Provincetown. And as you perhaps can see behind me, it's a very foggy morning. It feels like it's 7.30, but it is in fact 9-ish. <laughs> so tomorrow, of course, is the 4th of July. And we will be talking tomorrow morning about things you can do to help your dog or your cat or your horse with the sounds of uh, fireworks and crowds and parades. But today I want to talk about something that's been, um, that I've been thinking about. Tristan's shedding corgi glitter like an unbelievable rate. And he was a little bit sick this morning from a situation we might talk about on Friday. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something really important to those of us who love our animals, and that's this idea of being with them. So instead of taking your dog for a walk, go for a walk with your dog. And instead of talking to your dog, talk with your dog. Just the change in the language changes your relationship from you being in charge and doing something to someone to doing something with someone. And this idea is absolutely critical to our relationships with our dogs. When we walk with them, they are walking next to us. We have a connection with them. We are in what I call and what you know as heart coherence because we have had an episode of Conversations with a Corgi a long time ago about heart coherence. And you can look up more information about that at the Heart Math, M-A-T-H, institute.com. But when you are truly with your dog on a walk, you are connected in a very deep way. He's not pulling you. You're not pulling him. You have a relationship of equals and you are able to become aware of the world from their perspective and they are deeply tuned into you so that if something happens and you suddenly turn or stop the dog is in sync with you and knows immediately when you're going to do that and this is a relationship with animals that most of us crave and love and so it's really important to think about that idea when you're doing things with your dog about the idea of doing it with your dog or your cat or your horse or your rabbit the same thing goes for communication. As opposed to telling your dog what to do, ask them what you'd like them to do with you. This makes a huge difference. Um, and of course, we've talked about this on many occasions, but um, a well-known trainer named Victoria Stillwell did a little study where she talked to, to <laughs> her coworkers all day the way we talk to dogs. Sit, stay, come, good girl, you know, yes, all that. And at the end of the day, some of the people wanted to quit and some of them were mad and some of them thought she was mad at them. So this is a very disrespectful way to talk to our dogs as well as to humans. And we would not treat our children this way. So not that dogs are children, but why would we treat something we love with such a lack of respect? So it's really important to communicate with your dog. This is a two-way street. It implies with the word with that we are having a relationship with our dogs. And so when we ask them to do something, we need to communicate clearly and then see what their response is. When you're training your puppy to walk on a leash and he sits down and doesn't move, what's he telling you? He's afraid, he's hurt, he's tired, he's thirsty, he has to poop and he doesn't want to on the sidewalk. What is his message? Rather than dragging him down the street, see what he wants to do to help you understand what it is is going on with him. You will be so much more successful in everything you do with your dogs and your cats and your horses and rabbits and especially with rabbits because people don't think they're that trainable but if you communicate with them this way you will find that rabbits happily will do things that you ask them to do and even cats so what is your dog trying to tell you this is a two-way street when you're communicating with someone as opposed to to someone and it, this makes a difference as a teacher too Think of times in your life in the classroom where a teacher was talking to you instead of talking with you, and that makes a huge difference. I had a teacher in high school who yelled at us all day, our, our calculus teacher, throwing chalk, demeaning us. I don't think I learned anything about calculus until I had a tutor who was working with me. He liked to see me do my problems on the board. I was alone in a room with him, and he was truly fascinated at where I made mistakes, which sometimes were simple problems with my arithmetic and sometimes skipping steps and sometimes an inability to read my writing in my prior equation. So 
Um, I learned a lot about how I learn from him and a lot about where to look when I've made a mistake. And that learning uh, translated to many areas of my life. And in fact, I became a physics tutor because of what I learned from this retired professor, which I did not learn from the professor who was talking at me. So when you are having a conversation with someone, especially your dog, you will get a lot further in communicating with your dog and doing the things that you want to do with your dog in a joyful, connected way. So these ideas are really important, especially with um, fireworks and loud noises coming tomorrow. We need to be really aware of what's going on with our dogs. What are they afraid of? Where do they need to hide? Why do they, where do they go to feel safe? What can we do to help them with that? And of course, ear tea touches are a big part of this. And you can look back at the old episode of Conversations with a Corgi about ear tea touches. So think about doing things with your dog. Uh, Danny says, hope you're having a good relaxing time. We're trying to, Danny. It's been a lot of <laughs> running around. And I took a nap yesterday for the first time in my life. And I actually slept for half an hour at like 4 o'clock. I've never done that. I am just uh, tired. It's been a very busy time for the last three weeks before I came here. So anyway, think about how to connect with your dog, not to your dog. And look at how you relate to your dog, not just in terms of walking with him and communicating with him, but think about that word with in all parts of your life. There was a great study done by um, Emoto who wrote a book called Hidden Messages in Water and they showed two pictures of water crystals. He was freezing water crystals um, with words on the outside of the cylinder um, and noticing the changes in the crystals as a result of the intent and energy really in those words. And so the difference between do it and let's do it together was very different. The do it crystal didn't really form. It looked like it had a bullet hole through the middle of it. It looked like the crystal for Satan and some other things that aren't good. And it also, when you say do it, often that stops um, the vibration in your body. It stops your breathing. It increases tension. And when you're like that, you don't learn. So why do we want to treat our dogs like that if we're trying to help them learn how to live in the world that we have for them? So with the let's do it crystal, it looked like a beautiful snowflake. And that does not imply that the breathing has stopped or that the craniosacral rhythm is in crisis or that you and your dog are not in heart coherence. So it's so important. Our bodies are made up of like 75% water that changes different points in our lives. And if the water crystals in our body are responding similarly, or the, not the water crystals, the water droplets are responding similarly in our body, we don't want them to lose their frequency and their high vibration and their ability to keep us healthy and well by hearing things like do it, come, sit, stay. So think about talking with your dog because it really will not only change your chemistry, his biochemistry, but your relationship with your dog. So we will have a bit of corgi music to go off today. Look, some of the, some of the dog neighbors are going out for their walk and we will be going out in a minute ourselves. Tristan can't wait for his beach walk, can you Tristan? We met so many corgis yesterday. There was quite a bit of barking. Bexley, of course, who is big and strong and athletic and young. He was in charge of everybody, much to little Napoleon's chagrin. Right, Tristan? <laughs> to say part of being with a corgi and certainly a German Shepherd and some other breeds is being with the hair so we are lucky to have that corgi hair with us wherever we go I know when any of us have traveled out of town being able to pull a little tuft of hair off of a sock in your bag gives you a little sense of connection to your dog at home so everybody have a great day look at doing things with your dog instead of to your dog and we will be back tomorrow for some tips about uh, helping your dog cope with the loud noises on the 4th of July Everybody have a great day. Enjoy the outside and don't get too hot.